Hello everyone, welcome back. In this tutorial, we learn how to install and instantiate chain code. So as I've mentioned before, applications interact with the ledger through chain code. So first we need to install the chain code on every peer and then we will instantiate the chain code on the channel. So the first step we have to do is we'll install the chain code onto the peers. So it can be a sample Go or a Node.js chain code. In this tutorial, we'll be installing the Go chain code. So let's take this command, go to the terminal, paste it. So what, what here happens is a chain code with the name chain code example 02 will be installed or will be installed on the peer 0 of organization 1 and organization 2. It will be installed onto these two peers. Now next step is we'll instantiate the chain code on the channel. So what it happens is this will initialize the chain code on the channel, set the endorsement policy and launch the chain code container. So for that we will be taking this command. So here we can see that one thing we have to note here is the minus p flag. This refers to the policy. So here we are referring to the policy and having syntax as and. It means that we need endorsement policy or endorsement from a peer which is belonging to both organization 1 and organization 2. We can also change the syntax to or then it would be like we just need endorsement policy from one organization. And we are also initializing the value of A with 100, B with 200. So let's just instantiate the chain code. It's working. Now let's see whether the chain code was properly instantiated or not. Let's query the value for A. Earlier I've mentioned that the value was initialized as 100. Value for A was initialized as 100. So let's check whether it can query back 100. Yes, uh, the query result is 100. Now let's invoke the query. So we'll go back to the terminal. Now we are going to move the value of A to B, move from move 10 from A to B. That is an invoke is sent to the peer 0 of organization 1 to move 10 from A to B. So what happens is this transaction will cut out a new block and it will update the database. So let's see. Yes, the chain code invoke was successful. Now let's uh, check the let's query for the value of uh, A. So now let's confirm that the previous invocation was executed properly. So now first we have seen that we have initialized A with 100. Then we remove 10 from the with our previous invocation. Now we are again trying to query against A. So it should be revealing query result as 90. So let's check that. Let's go to the terminal and check that. So now when we try to query it, the value, the query results will be 90. Now we have successfully built our first network. We try to invoke and query the transactions. Now we can just manipulate the key value pairs and try to see how it is working. So now if you go back and see the first thing which we have done and we did they bring up the network, all these invocations and the queries was actually happening in there. So you can just check it again. You will see it, it launched all the containers and it has shown a complete end-to-end -end application scenario. The invocation, querying, reduction, everything was done in there. So you can check it out. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you have learned something new. Thank you.